This is the first video in Chapter 12, and Chapter 12 is going to be dealing with all sorts of statistical displays. By that I mean different types of graphs. And what we're going to do is take Chapter 11 and everything that we learned so far about statistics and blend it with Chapter 12, and we're going to be talking about lots of different graphs and measures of center and variations. Today's video is about line plots. What you'll need is your table of contents, so your math notebook, and the yellow sheet that I handed out in class. That looks like this. What you're going to need to do is cut on every dotted line. And then you're going to take each half and fold it so that you have two narrow strips, eight different types of graphs. And then you're going to actually cut each little door, each little door. When you glue it into your notebook, you're going, I turned mine uh, lengthways, and so that you can have one on each. That way you'll have enough um, room to actually write on a flat piece of paper instead of putting them all in one. Uh, your table of contents I have as page 77 notes. So please fill that in your table of contents, cut your yellow paper, piece of paper and glue it in and you're ready to go. What we have here are line plots. So a, a line plot is uh, has a number line and it has numbers just like a regular number line underneath that pertain to a topic. It is labeled. Here our topic is number of pets and you can see the X's going on top of each number. So like for this number three, Three people actually answered this statistical question of how many pets do you have, and they have three pets. So there's actually three threes in this set of data. There are actually five twos in this data. So please know that each uh, data point is represented by an X. Another example of a line plot, similar to what you've seen before, here all of the X's are clustering in this certain area, then there's this big gap and it's very easy to see this outlier over here. The reason why we like using line plots is that we can see right away, ooh, there's an outlier over there. In your notes, you can open up that, that door that's talking about line plots, and this is what we're going to write in the top section. And a line plot shows data on a number line. Fill that in. What's important to note is that sometimes they are called dot plots. The only difference being it's not an X, it's a dot. Now below in your notes, there is a spot for you to actually draw a line plot. And you're going to practice this in class with some data. Right now we're just going to kind of make up our data. We're just going to um, pretend that we asked the question, how many pairs of pants do you have in your dresser drawer? So you see on your uh, notes that there is a number line already set up and there's no numbers though and the topic is, is labeled. So you have number of pants in drawers, number of pants in dresser already filled in in the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our, number, our line plot by putting numbers on the bottom. We're going to start with 4, and we'll stop at 8. And then we're going to put our data on the line plot. Each person who answers, oh, I got four pair of pants, so they get an X. Another person answers, oh, I also have four, so they get the second X. And it goes on from there. So say we ask some people. Some people had four, some people had five. Three people we asked have six. And see how my X's are about the same size? That's important too. And just to finish it up, say one person had seven, they got crazy at, at uh, Target the other day and they bought a lot of pants. So that's an example of a line plot. We are going to be focusing on this in class, but I do want to teach you about another type of graph, and it's called a stem and leaf plot. Stem and leaf plots are a different way of showing information, and this example deals with the high temperature in Oswego, and you see that there are two columns. One are our stems, and the others are our leaves. So each row basically is 
a place value place. And this uh, could either be tens or hundreds. So this 6 actually stands for 60. This 9 stands for 90. A leaf and this, these are the 1s. And each row will be all of the numbers in the 60s, and then all the numbers in the 70s. And this 6 goes with this 3 to put the number 63 together. This 8 goes with the 2 to be 82 degrees. This 10 goes with the 1, and this means 101 degrees was one day in the Suigo. So it's a little bit different way of showing information. So in your notes, again, find the stem and leaf plot page, or little door, and we're going to write down that a stem and leaf plot is different because it organizes data by place value. And once you write that, we're actually going to create our own uh, below. Yours has the columns already there. Here's the stems, and here's the leaves. And let's get some context going on here. So let's pretend we asked a group of people. They could be teenagers or maybe adults. But the question is, how old is your grandfather or grandmother if you have one still alive? And we might get a variety of answers. Um, we're going to start with, if we ask some younger people, they might have grandparents in their 50s. So we're going to have a 5 to represent the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s. I know I have my grandparents and they're in their 80s. Say a grandfather or grandmother was 51 years old. That would be 1 on the leaf side and lined up with the 5, so that means 51. Say some other people had grandparents that were 56, maybe two people had that. So we're going to put two 6s to represent those two 56 um, ages. And then we might have a 59, another uh, pair of grandparents might be in their 70s, so maybe we have a 70 year old person and a 73 year old person. And the list goes on. And maybe when we ask people, there's nobody in their 60s. Uh, so let's just set an 8 down. And then we ask some adults that are more my age, where our grandparents are in their 80s. So we might have an 81, um, even some people in their 88s. So this is an example of a stem and leaf plot. Again, not something we're going to focus on. So the focus of tomorrow's class, like I said, we're going to draw line plots like we did in our notes, and we're going to describe data in sentences. This is the part I want to do an example with, because we're going to be using the measures of center and the measures of variability. Why bother? What's the key idea? We're going to use line plots, because the line plots is already a nice visual. It's already in order. It makes finding measures of center and seeing the measures of variability easier because it's already in order and if we want to see if there's an outlier that's very clear as well. Uh, in your notebook, I know you have two pages of the yellow uh, notes that you just glued in, I want you to turn to the next clean page. We're going to do an example together. You need the whole page to do this example. I might uh, end up turning off my projector just to have the whiteboard so that I have some space. Um, I might be able to fit in here, we'll see how it goes. But uh, this is an example of how to describe after you have made a line plot. Anything I write, you can write on the top of that new page. So, here's the data, and we're going to be drawing a line plot of the data, and then we're going to be describing using measures of center and using measures of variability. So it's a lot to describe. It's a lot of sentences. So, uh, the first thing I want you to do, right up at the top of your page, line plot example, because that's what this is. Line plot example. So that's at the top of your note page. The topic of what do these numbers mean? The topic, what I want you to write underneath, is these are going to be prices of dog collars. I went to PetSmart, I needed new collars for my two dogs, and here were the prices that I found. Prices of dog collars. And now we're going to take these numbers and we're going to write and draw a line plot. So I want you to draw a big line. 
and we can look what's the smallest number. We can start with that number. So I see that it's 10. And I also am noticing that it's counting by fives. So I'm going to want my scale to count by fives. 15, 20, 25, and 30. Now, well, I stopped at 30. That was the highest number. Now we're going to go ahead and put in our axis. So we have a 15, a 15, a 20. And notice I'm checking them off as I'm going to make sure I don't forget one. Lots of 15s, and I'm putting them right on top of each other. And then we have, whoops, 35 is the biggest one, not 30. My bad. So we have 35 over here, and a 10, and two more 10s. Very simple. That's the line plot. To finish it, we do have this label here. Technically, it should have been down here. That's okay. Now we're going to use this to describe the measures of center and the variability. So if we were to add all these numbers up, <laughs> you can go ahead and do that. You can pause and add them all up and divide by 10. Hopefully you added them up and you got 160. When you divide that by 10, that's 16. So I'm just going to make a list over here of what we're finding. So the mean is 16. Uh, the other measure of center is the mode. That's very easy to see. It's the highest column. So the mode is going to be 15. And the other measure of center is that median. So I'm going to go ahead and circle as the, instead of slashing because they're X's. So I'm circling the first pair. Then I'm going to circle the second pair. And now it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to go to the top and work my way down on the high end. So here's my third pair, here's my fourth pair, and I'm going to be left with these two axes in the middle. This is my median, a median is going to be 15. Same as my mode. Ooh, that's something to talk about. Now, measures of variability. We have the range from chapter 11, max minus min, 35 minus 10, we have our range of 25. Now we're going to find our Q1 and Q3. So Q1 and Q3, remember we've already found our median. Our median is halfway in between 15 and 15, which is 15. <laughs> it's the same, it's just 15. Now we're going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the high ones to find the Q3. So here's, I'm going to fill it in. Here's the first two, and here's the first two, and that leaves this guy, Q1. Notice how I'm marking it. So Q1 is 15. I'm sorry, Q3, we found that one first, is 15. Now let's find Q1. We have these two and these two. So finding Q1, we're going to go, here's one, and bottom a little bit trickier in the um, line plot. If you like to stretch them all out and do it like we did in chapter 11, that's fine too. Either way, Q1 is going to be, sorry, Q3 is 15, Q1 is 10. So that leaves our IQR with 5. Looking at this is uh, very clear that there's a big gap and we think that this is an outlier. To make sure, we have to take our 5 and multiply it by 1.5, which is 7.5. Then we're going to add it to that Q3. So 15 plus 7.5 is 22.5. So our upper limit, our boundary, is 22 and a half, right here. Definitely making that 35 an outlier. So 35, this data point, is an outlier. Now we have to write some sentences. And I'm actually going to make this blank so that I can write um, on here, but still have this picture and our information. So this information we're going to be using to write some sentences. 
So the first thing we can say, how many data points are there? And there were 10. So that's something you can always start out with. So these are some ideas of how to describe with a sentence. So the second thing we can talk about is that the median is 15, which means half the data is above 15 dollars and half is below. Instead of above and below, you can do uh, higher and lower, but just to just specify that that median splits it in half. Half of the prices are higher than 15, half of them are lower. So you could say above or you could say lower. It's really up to you. The next thing you could talk about is the mode. The mode being uh, most of the prices, where are they? So more prices are 15 than any other price because the mode is 15. So that's another thing you can say. Most of the prices were $15. What's unique to this one is that the mode and the median were the same. So another thing you can say when that happens is that most of the data is close to the median and the median. So kind of combining these two would be some another idea is to say that most of the data say most of the data is close to the median, which is the same as the mode. Now we're going to start talking about um, what represents the data the best because there is an outlier. Because of that 35, we want to say that the median and the mode, not the mean, will be the best number to represent the data. So that, when there's outliers, you can say since 35 is an outlier, the median or mode in this case, because they're exactly the same, best represents the data. The last example that you're writing down of a sentence that you can write talking about the variability is about the IQR. So the IQR is 5, and that's what you start out with. The IQR is 5, and now we have to say what that actually is talking about. Which means, so if the IQR is 5, which means half of the prices, because that's our topic, fall between the Q1 and Q3. So Q1 was uh, 10 and Q3 was 15. Here's the example for you to try if you'd like to. See you tomorrow.